Hello, my name is Simon Eck, and today I want to present you the CUDA C++ extension for the interactive just-in-time just compiler Kling, which enables interactive GPU development on NVIDIA uh, graphic cards. At the begin, I want to give you an introduction in Kling, how you can use Kling. Kling is a terminal application, like the Python interpreter. You can type in your code, execute it, and depending on the code, you get some results. Sometimes Kling is also named as interpreter, but it's not correct. It feels like to work like an interpreter, but it's a just-in-time compiler, so it can optimize code. There are also some uh, two other possibilities to use Kling. So the one is including a library in your application, and the others like Python using Kling in a Jupyter notebook. I uh, I switch to my terminal where I already started the Kling, and I demonstrate how it works. At the begin, I define a simple variable, and I do an addition on it, and I get a result. I can also define some functionality. This function simply returns a value, for example. And I execute a function and I get a result as expected. Let's switch to the Jupyter Notebook. For everyone who don't know Jupyter Notebook, in Jupyter Notebook you have some, you have cells. In the cell you typed in your code and then you can execute the code and depending on the cell you get a result output under the cell. The state of the interpreter and also the memory space is shared between the cells. So let's start with the classic example, hello world. I execute it and I get, like expected, hello world under the cell. I think you already mentioned it. The code looks different against classic C++. In this case, the main function is missing and the reason is really simple for this. C++ was not designed for interactive application, so the semantic and syntax needs small modification. The, the, click team, the Kling team decides to uh, do not use a main function. So Kling handle every statement which you typed in. So you typed in your uh, statements in the C++ global space and Kling handle it, but uh, don't worry, internally Kling transform it to valid C++ code. It's uh, necessary to reuse existing software, which you will see in a later example. But before, I want to give you uh, a feeling how the Kling, uh, how it works if you type in some code in the Kling. So, the first what I do is defining a global variable. So, I define the global variable g1 with the value 1. Now, I define a local variable l1, which lives in the anonymous namespace. After executing the cell, the local variable is not valid anymore because we left the anonymous namespace. So, if I want to access the variable, I get an error because of an uh, undeclared identifier. Also, like in a classic C++ application, the hiding rule is working. So, I can hide the global variable g1 with, the local with a local variable. In this case, the local variable has the value 3. And I, uh, leave, I leave the anonymous namespace. So, then the local variable is not valid anymore and I have the global one again. So the output should be 1, 3, and 1. And it is like expected. I already mentioned it. Software we use it is supported by Kling. And we do it via including header files and linking shard libraries or just in time compile external files. In this case, I used a self-written library. So at first I define a, a header file. For this, I use a so-called magic command. Magic commands are provided by Jupyter Notebook. In this case, the magic command means write the following content to the file, in this case the header file. So I define the header file with the namespace foo and the function bar, and I also write the implementation in the cpp file. With the other magic command, I execute the gcc to compile a shard library. Now I can simply include the header file and with a special pragma, link the shard library. And you can see, I can simply execute the function. And this, uh, you see a more complex example. It's a template class, which has the template parameter a and b. 
There's also a CUDA global function with it, which is executed on the GPU. The corners summarize A and B, and we have some extra functionality which allocates memory and a function compute which runs the kernel and copy the result to the CPU. So I define a class and create the object of it. Now I can run the compute function and you see, yes, the result is correct. Okay, a short summarize of the most important properties of the Kling. Kling uses the read aval print loop principle. So you type in the code, the code is evaluated and the result is printed. It's, Kling is not an interpreter, feels like, but it's a just-in-time compiler. That means we can achieve the same performance like uh, on, in a classic, opt, uh, classic static optim, in an optimized classic static application, or maybe better. It's fully compatible, compatible to existing libraries. So, for my example, I showed a self-written library, but you can also use existing library like the libssl, and you don't need modification at the library to use it, because Kling uh, uses C++, a valid static C++ internally. Later, when I discuss some implementation details, you will see why. Yeah, and we have the modified syntax and semantic. For example, no main function, or maybe you recognize that the missing semicolon at the end of a statement, which which triggers a special function of Kling and prints the return value of the last statement. But all this is just allowed in the terminal or in Jupyter Notebook as input. Okay, but why we did uh, develop the GPU extension? To understand this, you have to understand how a GPU works. A CPU has a few weak, uh, a few strong cores, and a GPU has many weak cores, but in some it had often a GPU has more power, uh, more flops than a CPU. So if your algorithm is well parallelized, you get a better performance on a GPU than on a CPU. And we have a uh, algorithm. So we wrote a, pa a laser wakefield acceleration simulation called Pig on GPU, which uh, performs really well on GPUs. And for NVIDIA GPUs, we use the CUDA library to execute it. So we have the two reasons. GPUs are really fast for our simulation and the simulation already exists and use the CUDA library. How, why we want to execute Kling on GPU and Kling, I will explain you in a, on a later slide. Okay, but now something about the basic concept. How can Kling handle the uh, every new statement which you type in and execute it. So the answer is it has a non-ending non translation unit. So it means every time if you type in a statement, you put a new part to the AST. A central concept of the Kling is a translation, transaction object. So a transaction object contains different information. For example, the input, the AST and LVM R code, the compiled code and more information. Each time if you add a new statement or the initial state, you will add a new part to the AST, which you can see on the left side. So you can extend your application during runtime. The transaction system has also two other tasks. So one is error recurring. In the case, if you typed in a statement which is not valid, the transaction will fail and Kling goes back to the last successful transaction and does not crash or uh, becomes an invalid state. The other task of the transaction system is undoing some, uh, some code. So you can undo a transaction and get an earlier state. For example, you can use it to link, uh, to load and unload a shard library. And also in the, uh, and in the meantime, you can modify the shard library. That allows the concept of rapid prototyping. Okay, let's up talk about what is happen if you um, create a new transaction. On the left side, you see the different stages of uh, handling a single transaction. We have the input, two different parsers, a AST transformer, a code generator, and in the end, there's the executor. So I explain each single point with an example. Our input is a function call. I defined a function before. You can see it on the right side. So the first stage after the input is the meta parser. 
the Metapasa has two tasks. The first task is transforming the C++ code. In this case, we need two transformations. One is adding the semicolon and make a mark that Kling has to print the uh, return value of foo later. The second task is to add a function wrapper. This is necessary because function calls are forbidden in the C++ global space. The other task of the meta parser is handling so-called meta commands. We use meta commands for different tasks, for example, linking shared libraries, set the optimization level for debugging, and more. Okay, in the end of the meta parser, we have valid C++ code, which is necessary for the next stage, the parser. The parser is a non-modified Clang parser, and this is the reason why we need a valid C++ code, otherwise the Clang parser would fail. So the Clang parser simply passes the code to AST in the LVMR code, and now we can use the AST transformer to modify the AST. We have th three different kinds of transformation. The first kind is enable the basic functionality of Clang. For example, for the CUDA mode, we need a CUDA device kernel in item. This uh, modification is necessary that we can use a device function for different statement, statements or in Jupyter Notebook for different cells. The next kind is error protection. We use different transformations to avoid errors, for example, in Alpinter access. And the last kind of, uh, of transformations are Kling specific features. For example, we have a shadow namespace features. The shadow namespace features allows a kind of redefinition. For the user, it looked like that you can redefine a function or a class, but internally, uh, Kling hides the existing uh, definition with a namespace and a new definition of the function. And then it handles that the correct uh, namespace and function is accessed. For the user, it looked like redefinition and it's pretty cool. Okay, we have the transformed AST, and the AST is simply compiled just in time to the machine code. For example, on my notebook in to x86 code, and depending on the code, it is executed. In the case of our function, it is executed, and we get a return value, which you can see on the right side. What was the challenge uh, which I have to solve uh, for my CUDA extension? So, the first challenge is, is interactive C++ possible? To develop, a CUDA C++, to develop a CUDA application, you have two APIs which you can use. The first is a driver API, and the driver API allows to add and remove device code which is executed on the GPU during runtime, so it's perfect for interactive usage. Unfortunately, the driver API was designed to integrate in tools and so on, so Nobody who wants to develop the application use the driver API. So everybody who is using, uh, who wants to develop the application use the runtime API. So we have to support the runtime API. Unfortunately, the runtime API doesn't allow us to add or remove um, kernels at runtime, so there is no function. I tested a lot with modified LVMR code and some prototypes, and I found out the runtime API can also handle it if you add a kernel at runtime or remove it. So, and it makes sense because the driver has, uh, doesn't know at the beginning of application if you use the driver API or runtime API. The second question was how can Kling understand CUDA C++? CUDA C++ is not fully whether C or C++. For example, you have the function call with this special bracket, which is not possible in C or C++. So, for the parser, likely there was a project. Google's GPU CC project solved the problem and enable, uh, enable to compiling CUDA C++ with the Clang LVM. So, we only needed to activate it in Clang. But for the meta parser, it was not possible because the meta parser is self implemented. Later, I will get you some details about this problem. The last challenge was how to integrate the device pipeline. To understand what is the device pipeline, you have to understand what is a CUDA application, how a CUDA application works. A CUDA application is, uh, has two parts. One is the host part, which is executed on the CPU, and one is the device part, which is executed on the CPU. So if you run your application, uh, you start your application on the CPU. By your library commands, 
uh, as application controls the GPU. And the device code for the GPU is also integrated in the application. So it means at a point if you want uh, if you want to execute a program, the CPU has to, has to send the device code to the GPU, also the data, and then via library command execute the uh, kernel. But the CPU and GPU has different architecture. So we need two different compiler pipelines to compile the host and the device code for each architecture. And that's the reason why I have to integrate a second compiler pipeline in the Kling. Because the Kling without CUDA extension just can, can just compile for the host CPU. There was also some general problems. CUDA is proprietary, so at the first moment it's not so bad because there is a really, really good documentation, and special for application document development. There is also some background information, which is pretty nice, but at some points I need some information about details, which was not documented, so I needed to do some black box testing. Documentation was also a subject for Kling, Clang and LVM. At the beginning of my work, I was completely new with the Clang and LVM library. So for the LVM part, the documentation is really good and I had a lot of examples. The Clang documentation has uh, some parts of the Clang was not so good documented, documented, but in general it was okay and I had also some good projects where I can get some information. The Kling documentation is really rudimentary because there are just a few developers working on Kling and they spend its time to develop new features. And also a really big problem was there is no similar project like Kling, so I had no other source of information. The last general problem was the CUDA runtime API is not designed for interactive usage, so I get some really strange problems and there is no experience in the internet how to solve because nobody has it before. So I had to develop some workarounds by myself. Okay, let's talk about implementation. In this image you can see the concept of the implementation. On the left side you have the input system. Then you have the both compiler pipelines. The red one is for the host CPU and the green one for the device pipe, is the device compiler pipeline. In the end you have the executors. So at the beginning, we have the input and the middle parser, which transforms the C++ code to valid C++ static C++ code. So both parsers get sim uh, valid C++. At first, the device compiler passes the code, do some AST transformations. Here, some transformations are shared between both compiler pipelines and uh, some transformation exclusive. And then the AST is compiled to P PDX. PDX is a kind of a sample which can be executed by the NVIDIA GPU. The PDX code is wrapped in a FedBin wrapper. Fed wrapper. The FedBin wrapper contains the PDX code and some meta information. After this, the host compiler pipeline is running. It passes the code, transforms it, and then the code is going to the x86 backend where it compiles. During the x86 backend, the Fed binary code is embedded as code section in the object file, and there are also, and there will also generated some functions. For example, a function which later sends a register the PDX code on the GPU. If the comp uh, if the code is completely compiled, it is executed in the executor. And if we reach a function call for CUDA, we send the command to CUDA runtime, and the code is executed. Here you can see some libraries. You see it's a wide mixture between self-implemented Kling libraries, some Clang libraries, and LVM libraries. So, let's talk about some detailed problems. The first was the meta parser. I already mentioned it. The meta parser is completely self-written because it, the parser has to understand the interactive C++ semantic. But there is a big problem. The C++ semantic is really complex and the Kling, ex Kling and the CUDA extension make it more complex. So there is a lot of work to cover all C++ uh, valid CUDA C++ statements. At the moment, uh, there is no optimum solution, so we cover just the most important cases. There is also raw input mode, which is a workaround. It simply says skip the meta parser and direct, directly send the code to the parser. 
For the future, we think about to modify a Clang parser to understand the interactive C++ code, and so we can cover every valid Qt C++ statement. Other problem, uh, other general problem is catching errors. Because the user code and the just-in-time compiler shares the same process and memory space, the uh, error in the user code can crash the whole application and we lose, we lose the AST. So our solution at the moment is that uh, using analysis, detect the error and modify the code before it is executed. But this is not a general approach, so we have to develop it for each uh, error, error case or kind of errors. Maybe in the future we find a better solution for this. The last detailed problem is updating the Clang LVM base. So Clang is heavily basing on Clang LVM, and with each new Clang LVM base, we get new we get support for new Qda SDK version, CPU, we get new C++ features, and a lot of bug fixes. But we can simply uh, change the base because the AP is not C++ AP is not stable anymore. And we have also some Clang specific patches on the Clang. So we have to redo the patches each time if we update the base. And it's a lot of work and often it takes also a lot of time. At the moment we work on uh, there is a possible solution. Vasiliev Vasiliev posted IRC on the Clang mailing list to create a simple Clang REPL in the LVM project. It was in August. So the idea is, if we have the Clang Rebel, we can put a lot of clean specific patches for Clang to the upstream, and so we can reduce the work for the maintainers. So I talked about a lot what is working, but there are also some features missing. So some C++ and CUDA statements does not work in the CUDA mode. The reason is really simple. Some CUDA statements need some extra work, and the meta parser has also some problems. We also restricted to the Qda SDK version 8, the current version is 11, because of the old Clang base. Yeah. Not all Clang features are working at the moment uh, yet, so it means, for example, redefinition of function co classes and kernels does not work at the moment, but I want to work on it and hopefully it works in the future. The middle parser does not detect our Qda statement, I already mentioned it. Yeah, and error catching is a problem for all the time. So, okay, what, what do you want to do with the Kling? So, at the beginning, I already introduced it. We want to execute our Plasma Wakefield simulation interactively. The, the motivation is that we have the simulation which really works uh, well on HPC systems, so we can generate petabytes of data per second. But if we want to analyze it, we have to store to disk. And this, in the best case, we have one terabyte per second to disk. So it's a big, uh, big bottleneck. The first solution was to, anal to add the analyze to the simulation. And so we can avoid the memory bottleneck. But then we have to know what we want to analyze before we run the simulation. Otherwise, we have to change the analysis and execute the simulation again, which can take hours. So our wish is to have a loosely coupled analysis, and we want to do it with Kling. So we want to start the simulation in Kling, add, and add interactively, and remove the analysis on runtime. We have also two other ideas what we can do with the Kling. One is using it for teaching. We already did it in the uh, lecture for the students at a university, and it was really well. We gave a Jupyter notebook with uh, implementing tasks for the kernel, and, the students was, uh, and for the students it was really good. The other idea is to use Kling for easy development and debugging. I, read, I already mentioned it, we can do rapid prototyping, and with the reflection feature we get a lot of uh, really important information. For example, we want to use it with our Packer fragment, which allows uh, um, a meta, which is a meta programming library for parallelization. Okay, let's summarize. So, the Kling is the first interactive C++ just-in-time compiler which can execute Qda C++ code on the GPU. I added the dual compiler instance concept to Kling, which allows us to implement other GPU APIs. For example, AMD or Intel. 
Most of the features which I presented are in the Kling upstream already. And with Jupyter Notebook, we enable new uh, areas of application. For example, data analysis in notebooks, high performance data analysis in notebooks or teaching. So thank you very much for listening to my presentation. and welcome to the live Q&A session. You have watched the talk of Simeon Ehrlich. Simeon works at the Helmholtz Zentrum Dresden Dusseldorf, uh, Rosendorf, Germany, and he is responsible for the CUDA supporting Clink. Thank you, Simeon. Uh, now let's get to the questions. So we have, uh, have a question. The first question is, could you share what kind of CUDA documentation was not available? Uh, yes, so in general there was some uh, functionality for the runtime API for functions which are uh, generated by the compiler. For example, um, re registering the CUDA counters. So I thought the compiler generates the function and then I found simply a header. And so for some arguments I was not sure what it's doing. And also the problem was um, how the uh, fat binary format was defined. Thankfully, the LVM project C CXX JIT uh, implements an open source version of it because in our first approach, we used the external tool from NVIDIA, the FatBin tool, which takes a lot of time at compiling and now we have integrated it. Okay, thank you. And the next question is, have you looked at the NVRTC, which allows programmatic CUDA code compilation? Uh, yes, I saw the documentation and um, it's not suitable for solution. The reason is really simple. So it's, uh, it's, it's developed to integrate in your application and it takes a string, but we use a compiler. So if we get a code, we pass it and we have the AST and so on, and we have then we have no string. So we have two options. Either we can uh, try to cut out the original source code and pass it to in, um, or we generate the source code again from the AST. But days in the past, I used the AST printer, and it's it has a lot of bugs and it doesn't work. Yeah, and the other option also not works because we also modify the AST to enable some King specific function. For example, in the future, I have to add some namespaces to the corners for the um, shadow function to redefine colors. Okay, uh, thank you. And is there, is it possible to support HIP, the AMD GPUs? Yeah, I think it's possible because it's also, um, it's implemented in the Clang base, and um, a lot of um, a lot of implementation is shared with the CUDA implementation, and also the workflows are similar. At the moment, it's just a problem with the old Clang base of Clang. So we have at first we have to upgrade the Clang base to get the hip features, and then we can support it. And do you have a feeling of how much time would it take? And is that a priority for you? Um, I think it would take uh, some time and it's not a priority at the moment because we also use HIP for static application in our research center. And at the moment we see that it's, cons it's really fast developing and they fix a lot of bugs and there are a lot of API changes. And so I think at first we have to develop stable uh, HIP applica static application stable hip static hip applications and then we can think about the interactive usage thank you uh, i have two more questions uh, the first one is uh, given the states that you have described of, of the CUDA supporting link um, are there possible ways to make the current implementation faster uh, yes, 
um, one solution. So at the moment, uh, the compilation of the device code and the host code are strictly linear. So it means at first the device code has to be compiled and then the, oh, no, sorry, first the device code has to be compiled, then the host code. But uh, for some statements, like for example, if you uh, define a function, it's not necessary that, uh, sorry, you define a kernel, it's not necessary that you have the uh, compiling result immediately because you need it just uh, at first if you call it. So theoretically, it can be done in parallel. Okay, thank you. Um... And the last question, uh, what are the next immediately planned features? What's next on your, on your to-do list? Um, on the one side is uh, to support more CUDA features. So I already mentioned it in the video. So we have some trouble with constant memory and uh, uh, device, global device memory. And our main goal is to support our particle and cell simulation and so this is the f and it has a set of functions which we have to support which we need to support yeah, and then also supporting the other clear features and on the other side a really interesting thing feature is the um, namespace shattering which allows a redefinition of uh, functions and so on and at first I want to enable this in the Qdo code that we can redefine classes and functions, and then also kernels. Okay, thank you. And we have a last minute question, actually. Um, can you please comment on performance? How does performance with Clink compare to the performance with the client compiler? And you have uh, around two minutes yeah. to reply. Yeah, in Clink, we have, um, we, have, we have to separate performance on the one side. We have the performance of compiling. And on the other side, we have the performance of executing the code because in summary, it uh, summarizes the execution time of a whole bunch of code. And the runtime of the code is fast as the Clang compiler itself because it used the same optimization. So we can use O3. And on the uh, device uh, on compiling time, it's okay because it's limited what uh, how many code you can type in and then the time for compiling is really fast <laughs> and you can also just in time compile c++ source code but for a real world application you would recompile it with a normal compiler as shardari and then link it so in general so in, way, so in general in this enables sorry go ahead uh, sorry, yeah. So in general, the performance is really well, I would say. Okay, uh, thank you. So um, there's no more questions, uh, but if any questions uh, shows up, uh, you're welcome to discuss everything offline uh, using the community board. Thanks you all for joining and thank you all for asking the questions. Thank you, Simeon, for your talk. Thank you, Vasil, for your moderation.